college football. Penn State won the toss. They want the football. So Cade Foster will kick. Davon Smith and Chaz Powell are back deep. Chaz Powell took one on the opening kickoff to the house last week for the Nittany Lions. There he is, number two. The kick will go to Smith at the four. And down at the 20-yard line, that's where Penn State will go to work with Rob Bolden, the sophomore quarterback. And a year ago, Todd, he goes into Tuscaloosa, and it's a tough spot. But as we take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players, he's going to get help from this guy, who had a big game last week, takes over for Evan Royster, who's in the pros now, two touchdowns a week ago. Jordan Hill defensively had a career high in tackles in Tuscaloosa last year. And Chaz Powell, we talked about not only in the secondary, but a great return man as well. There's your impact players for Penn State as they work from the 20-yard line. And it'll be Bolden to roll the throw on first down. He's going to air it long, and he's got a man. Davon Smith had it in his hands and couldn't hold it. Well, I was a little surprised Penn State took the ball if they won the toss. But I'll tell you what, they want to be aggressive in the first play of the game. This is a beautiful throw by Rob Bolden. And right away you saw a couple things. They're going to challenge Alabama, and they're going to move the pocket. The first pass play, Rob Bolden rolled to his right a little bit and throw, threw a beautiful pass Oof. just a little bit too far for Smith. And Joe's up there saying you can't do it any better than that. Now they go to the ground to the fullback. He got a yard maybe. The Penn State offense working against the defense that is so stingy, especially against the run. Well, and, and this is the problem. When you come out and throw on first down, as good as that looked and as close as it was, and then you get stuffed on second down, now you play right into the hands of this Alabama defense. Third down and seven plus is when they're at their best, and they really get after you in terms of putting pressure on the quarterback. They only converted one of these situations in Tuscaloosa. Last year, a third and seven plus, third and eight here. Bolden, plenty of time, fires a strike, got a man, and it's Justin Brown. So they're one for one. They're as good as they were a year ago. Well, it starts with the protection, and I mentioned if you have to pick one area of the game to focus on to see if Penn State will have a chance in this game today, it's the offensive line, how they hold up against this Alabama front seven. And two pass plays in this first drive, excellent protection for Rob Bolden. On a third and eight, he got 15. So first down at the 37-yard line for the Nittany Lions on their opening drive here in the opening minute. Joe Suey, the fullback, with Silas Red behind him. And a whistle. Well, they had and to a take timeout. A timeout. Yep. Matt yep. Austin, our referee yeah, today. Second timeout. Timeout. You know, it's interesting. When we talked to Jay Paterno and Galen Hall yesterday at Penn State, they, they said, you know, we moved the ball. We, we felt like we had some confidence moving the football, and, and our kids are confident coming into this game. And then we went over and met with Kirby Smart, and he said, you know what? It was kind of a perfect storm for us because right. they moved the ball on us, but they turned the ball over down in scoring territory, and we were able to jump on them a little bit. That was Jay on the right, and Galen Hall in the middle there in the booth. And, of course, you saw Joe Paterno. Jay's father also a legendary coach with 402 wins working from the booth because of the injuries he suffered back the first week of August when he was run over by one of his own players Davon Smith who was the intended receiver on that opening pass of the ball game. So Joe's working with a little shoulder problem a little hitch in his pelvis yeah. and he's uh, walking around with a cane but he showed us that uh, doesn't need the cane all the time. He's trying to get back in his six mile a day walking shape at age 84. <laughs> <laughs> And there's Davon Smith. Luckily, Davon's 157 pounds, or Joe might have suffered worse injuries. So first down. Following that timeout. Play action. And Bolden fires it out, completes. Joe Suey, the fullback, and a pickup of four as we check in. Third member of our team, Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, guys, all week it's been back and forth on who would start this game, a quarterback for Penn State, and the coaches decided to go with Rob Bolden today. But they've told his backup, Matt McGloin, who is right behind him, neck and neck. They call him two number ones to be ready. Joe Paterno told me yesterday he wouldn't be shocked if they split the reps because both guys can do certain things well. But right now, Rob Bolden looks like he's getting off to a good start. He's off to a great start. Second down and six at the 41. Red. Weaves.
weaves his way to a first down. Nice run. Right up the middle. Out to the 49. Well, you couldn't ask for anything better for Penn State than this opening drive. They were aggressive with the pass on first down. They converted a third and long, and now they're getting Silas Red involved, and they're nearing the 50-yard line. So this is exactly what Penn State would have hoped for coming out to start the game. Silas Red, I mentioned, takes the top spot from Evan Royster, who ended up being Penn State's all-time career rushing leader, having gone on to the NFL. And now, first down as they're close to midfield. They'll give it to him again. And Red, nice gain again. Got to the 47. Nice mixture of run and pass right now for Penn State. Getting the ball to Red. The fullback ran at once. And then short passes. Getting the ball out of Rob Bolden's hands and moving the chains. You, you have to stay ahead of the chains against Alabama. What I mean by that is you have to stay in third down situations and less than seven yards. Right now they're on a second down again. Second and six for the second time on this drive. And now it's Bolden in the shotgun for the first time. Quick look to the right. And it batted down as he was trying to throw a slip screen out in the flat to Davon Smith. And Damian Square says, uh-uh. You know what? I think that Rob Bolden's lucky that was knocked down because Dre Kirkpatrick read this play and might have even picked the thing off had it come all the way to Davon Smith. Alabama was ready for that play on second down. So now they find a third and six again. Neither team did well in their season openers on third down as Penn State was two out of ten, but we saw them pick up a third down at eight earlier. Right away, we talked about that offensive line, and Jimmy Okole, who was the starting right tackle, a senior, a fifth-year guy, just hobbled out of the game. So there's a replacement in the game already for Penn State on that offensive line and right tackle, and they're going to have to take another timeout. Oh, boy. And there you see Okole. Adam Gress has come in to take his spot. We'll take a timeout here just under 12 remaining first quarter. Penn State driving, but they've got a big third down when we come back. Now that doesn't mean we don't want to kick there. You know what? Joe usually apologizes to the ladies and then <laughs> yeah. says, you know what, anyway. Now right now is Nippy Lyons on a good-looking opening drive. Eighth play coming up. Well, the two guys you got to really pay attention with with this Alabama defense are Hightower and Upshaw, and they'll line up in a lot of different places. All right, right now this is... Hightower and Upshaw is up here on the end. They're both on the end. going to rush the pass. They show blitz on the inside hand off the red. First down and more. Nice play call there on a third down and six. They got nine. Excellent play call. They put those two guys on the outside to get up the field and rush the passer. They knew Penn State had a new right tackle in the game. Watch these guys come up the field and they run right underneath them. They invited the rush up and they lead with the, the tackle pulls around and a nice play on third down and another conversion on a third and long for Penn State. Michael Zorich comes in at fullback in front of Silas Red. As they Shuttled around on that offensive line with a Coley out. And here's Red again. Nice second effort to get down to the 35 and pick up a four. Well, I'll tell you what, Brad, the, at the start of the show, I said, would Penn State answer the challenge physically? They did not do it last year. They were not ready to play the style that Alabama was playing. They are right now. They're taking it to this Alabama defense. And the thing that Kirby Smart talked about with us as well and you mentioned it earlier but this is the trouble area for Penn State a year ago when they get down around the 30 yard line they had three turnovers inside the tied 30 right now they're just outside the 35 and they go straight ahead with red and he's down close to the 31. Penn State's had to shovel up front because right tackle Chimo Coley's gone out with a right ankle injury. But I saw him get up after the athletic trainer looked at him. He put his shoe back on, guys, which is always a good sign. I'll let you know if he's able to come back in. But they've moved Deontay Pinnell, their guard, out to right tackle and put up John Urschel at right guard. All right, Holly, it's third down at two. They've converted their third down so far. And if they get inside the tied 30, they'll have another one. Red, he's close, but I don't think so. 
It looked like he was going to get it for sure, and then he got pushed back. I think Mark Barron's the guy that put the hammer down, and that happens to a lot of people that play Alabama. Now, Joe Paterno's up in the yeah. booth, and he's going to relay down to Mike McQuarrie and Tom Bradley, and the guys on the sideline, what they're going to do. There's Mike, former quarterback. And he's saying go. It's an interesting dynamic because not only is Joe Paterno up in the box, but Jay Paterno and Galen Hall, the two offensive coordinators and play callers, are also up in the box. So Mike McQuarrie is the receiver coach. He's down there on the field. And Tom Bradley, you could see, even though he's the defensive coordinator, he was getting over to take a look at how far the, they needed for the first down. Brandon Beecham's a little bigger tailback. He's in there right now. This is amazing. This, there goes another timeout. Oh, delay your game. Beg your pardon. That's not going to help him. I thought they got the timeout called. And that chain of command, that might have cost yeah. them that much time. Well, it's just different. You know, again, you've got your head coach upstairs. You've got your two play callers upstairs. Everything has to be communicated downstairs. And, uh, and you want to make sure you have the right play called because you've had a beautiful drive. So fourth down coming up. And now you've got the question, you know, what what do they do here? I think they got the time they, they I called in time. I think it's still fourth down and one. Penn State called their third and final time They did. The Thank you very much. Penn State, Matt Austin. Their third and final time out. Thanks, Matt. That's what we were wondering about because there was some at, at you might have overheard them say delay a game, somebody out of the field, but they did get the timeout called just in time. So the timeouts are gone, but they still got a fourth down and one. Yeah. Not very good job of, of and you can't really say clock management because it wasn't like they had to call timeout because they couldn't get the snap. They just didn't know how to get lined up. Yep. They didn't have the right personnel. Three plays so far early in the first quarter. So the good news, I guess, is it's in the first half and not in the second half that they lose all their timeouts. As they come back on the field, Brandon Beecham, I mentioned, is in a tailback. He's bigger, heavier than Silas Red. They've also got Joe Suey in there, the fullback in front of him, who they do tend to use in short yardage situations. Here's a huge play in the opening quarter of this game. Fourth and a yard. It comes a blitz inside, and Bolden rolls with it, looking for the sticks. I don't know. He reached he the ball. It. He, he got reached it. the football, Brad, and I think that's what got him the first down. Boy, they put it right on the line, and now they do say first down. Another gutsy call wow. this opening possession by Penn State. No kidding. It looked like Barron was going to cut him off, but watch him reach the football across the first down marker to assure the first down. It's where the ball is before his feet go out of bounds. Great play by Bolden. First down inside the 30. 11th play of the Penn State opening drive. And now Beecham goes for a couple. Beecham had a good game last week as well in the opener. Seven carries, an average about six. Every time he touched it, the current drive, 13 plays in over six minutes. Boy, talk about what a way to open yeah. on a gorgeous day. By the way, I was going to mention after Joe was talking at the pep rally, Dean DeVore is the PA guy, and he's also a meteorologist around here. You said there was a big storm center until Joe raised his cane <laughs> right at the pep rally, and then he said the two storms went in opposite directions. As you can see, it's sunny in about 75 right now. Silas Red right into the middle of the pot. No game this time. And now they're going to put themselves in that third and long situation that Todd has said they don't want to find themselves in against this defense. And again, last year when these teams played in Tuscaloosa, there were eight situations where it was third down and seven plus. They only converted one, and both of Rob Bolden's interceptions came in those situations. They got pressure and hit him as he released the football, and they got two interceptions in this part of the field last year. They did pick up a third and eight earlier on the drive. Can they do a third and seven here? Four receivers set as Bolden's in the gun. Flush from the pocket, throws on the run and low and incompletes. Intended for Justin Brown. That'll bring out the field goal unit, which has been shaky at best for Penn State. So they drove in the length of the field, and now can they turn it into at least three points, or will a great-looking opening drive for yeah. Penn State go all for naught if Evan Lewis can't hit the field goal? He's 0 for 2 on the season. They missed from 38 and 47 last week, and he also missed an extra point. This one will be from 43 yards out. Try to pick up his first three-pointer of the year. It would be big to end this opening drive. 
Lewis kick on the way, and it is good. Good looking opening drive for the Nittany Lions. Taking the length of the field, they stall, but they get three with 7.34 remaining first quarter. Penn State goes 54 yards in 16 plays. 7.26, they used half the first half. Now this is an area last week that Penn State struggled a little bit kicking off. So instead of Evan Lewis, it's Anthony Farah kicking off, who was didn't kick last week, a little bit in Joe Paterno's doghouse, but he is back this week. We're going to see him kick off a little stronger leg. He's got Dean Miller, Trent Richardson back deep for Alabama. Not only the starting tailback number three, but can really bring it on the returns. Bears kick. High, and Richardson's going to snag it at the six yard line. And got out near the third. 19 yard kick return for Trent Richardson. He'll stay right in there as we take a look at our Chick fil A impact players because he's one of them. 144 yards on the ground last year in the win in Tuscaloosa. You can't talk about their defense without talking about impact players on the other side. Dante Hightower, one of the best linebackers in the country, and maybe the best safety. Two time All American Mark Barron is in the back end for the tie. And here's A.J. McCarron making his second start of this young season from the 25 yard line. Richardson, whoa! Hit in the backfield and he somehow got about three out of it. That was a head on collision with Devin Still. Oh, a big rivalry there. Here, Alabama going to the rear and complete intended for Marquise Mays. And nice job by Michael Molly, the linebacker, to drop into coverage. Well, there's no question that this is a different Penn State team than Alabama faced last year. You saw it in the opening offensive drive, and you saw it in the first defensive play by Devon Still. And right now, third and long is what Penn State's defense wants to get Alabama in as well, with a young quarterback and his first big start on the road. And he's in an empty backfield right now with five receivers. Third down and eight. McCarron fires deep middle in and out of Marcus May's hands, and the tie will have to punt. The ball was a little bit behind Marquise Mays, but two times Marquise Mays, who had such a big game last week with eight catches, was hit as soon as he dropped the ball. Watch the ball a little behind, and then he gets peppered at the end of the play. Penn State's secondary very in tune to who the go-to guy is in this pass offense. So they're going to have to punt. Smith and Brown. Dual return man inside the 30 yard line from Cody Mandel. Oh man, they got close to him. And it's a short kick, fair catch called for and taken at the 37 yard line. 39 yard punt is all. Penn State's, their defense holds, their offense look good on their opening drive. They lead by three. Have squared off. They had a long series starting when my partner was playing quarterback here at State College. Trent Richardson. So far, sledding's been pretty tough. Joe Paterno never beat Bear Bryant. Had some great things to say about him yesterday and said he would be proud if he was still alive to see what Nick Saban has done with the Crimson Tide program. And there's the number four and nine all time against Alabama. A Karen low snap, going to flare it out. It's knocked up in the air by Jack Crawford. <laughs> Jack Crawford wants a penalty because A.J. McCarron grabbed him to keep him from intercepting the ball that he deflected. <laughs> a beautiful play by Crawford, timing his jump. He comes over the edge, gets a hand up, and then tries to go for the interception, and McCarron throws him out of the way. Wow, he had a pretty good call there. <laughs> Pass interference by the quarterback. That'd be a good one, wouldn't it? Well, when the ball's tipped, there is no pass interference. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was looking for. Yeah. 
Third down at six. McCarron fires across the middle and throws a strike to Brandon Gibson. Let's just see if it's enough for the first down, though. Right at the marker. I think he's got it. Might have to be real come close. Measure. Real close. Alabama does a good job of running what people call stick routes, and that is you know, when it's third and seven or eight, they run routes that get the first down. They run to that distance, try to turn and catch the ball with enough after right at the catch to get the first down. Short by just the tape at the end of the links. They're going to run right to that marker. Now, certainly they don't see the yellow line, but they know where the first down marker is. And credit Penn State for being right there and not allowing the receiver, Gibson, to fall forward anymore after the catch. Well, if there's any question whether Nick Saban would fool around on a fourth down at about four inches, yeah. there's his putter. This is the smart play. You don't want to give this Penn State team and this crowd any more reason to get excited. They got enough ammo going yep. already. Again, Justin Brown and Davon Smith are both back deep. Fake. And they pick up. We didn't get it. No, they didn't. Penn State picks it up. Smelly was the ball carrier. He thinks he got it. Penn State doesn't think so. I think they're going to have to measure again. Almost have to in this situation. Well, if they got it, they got it by a nose. They, they did not get it by much if they got it. Matt Austin, our referee, immediately said, I'm going to settle this thing by measurement. I'm not going to take a guess on something like this. See, he caught the ball five yards off the line of scrimmage, and he is hit right at the, the first down marker. Boy, this is huge. And first down by a nose, not even. A half a nose. Your nose instead of mine. <laughs> Tell you what, I did not think that he got that. I thought Penn State was ready, and I thought they hit him, with, and I didn't see very much forward progress. There you see Smelly, the tight end, puts his head down. He got popped by Glenn Carson. And again, just barely. First down at the 41. Smelly stays in there, the two tight end set for Alabama. I think that might have fired the crowd up even more than if Penn State would have gotten the ball back. They are making some noise in the student section. And Richardson got two or three. Richardson again. Well, last, yard, that's about it. Yeah, last year, Trent Richardson played the bulk of the game. Mark Ingram was hurt. He had 144 yards. 93 of those yards came after contact. Penn State did a poor job tackling him, and you have to gang tackle him because he's big, he's strong, but he's built low to the ground. And so far, anyway, Penn State has done a great job of gang tackling Trent Richardson. And he's averaging about what he averaged in the season opener, about 2.8 a pop right now. As he comes out as an extra wide receiver. A third down at six. McCarron in the shotgun in an empty backfield. Deep middle and caught. What a catch by Marquise Mays right in front of Nick Suke. Wow. Nick Suke went for the interception and thought he had it. Watch him cut underneath the route of Marquise Mays. He thinks he's going to get the interception. He misses it, and tremendous concentration on the part of Mays as it goes through Suke's hands right into his own. Marquise Mays, the senior out of Birmingham, one of the best catches he's ever made in that uniform. Trying to fill the hole of Julio Jones, who's an Atlanta Falcon. Somebody's got to make those big plays, and he just made a big one right down the middle. McCarron blitz across the middle this time to Bell, and Bell rings it up for another first down near the 11-yard line. Pick up a 14, so the last two plays, chunks of 29 and 14 for the tide, and they're down in the red zone. A couple nice throws by McCarron also. The post down the seam and then the crossing route after he saw that Bell had gotten separation from Lynn. Did a nice job of leading his receiver. He's got a little less noise to deal with in the left end of the stadium because the student body's on the other end. He's in the pistol set with Richardson behind him. Penn State almost jumped and now Richardson gets the call and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. 
Gerald Hodges, the outside linebacker, closed in. Michael Mowdy, the other outside backer. Devin Still, the captain on the defensive line, all there to meet him. This is where the going gets a little more tough down here. Now this would suggest a play action down here, second and nine. Or even a screen to Richardson, potentially. All three receivers to the right and now Mays comes back in motion to the left side. There's the play fake, Todd called for. There's the throw, and it's complete to Mays inside the 10. And down to the five. Michael Mowdy got him down, but a pick up a six. This is an interesting down right now because it's third down and they can get a first down at the two. A couple more and they'd be in the end zone. We'll call it third and three. Just outside the five. McCarron again in a pistol set, but he's going to send Richardson in motion. Fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Michael Williams, a tight end. McCarron, good looking drive for him. Threw some strikes, including that one to his tight end for the touchdown. We'll take a look now. Here's the tight end right in the. On the line of scrimmage, Smelly was in the slot. He goes out, and that's a beautiful throw right in between two linebackers. Hodges and Carson were closing in on the tight end, but McCarron really stuck it in there. I don't know how he snuck it in there. <laughs> that was a great throw, ending a 69-yard drive, and the extra point is good. So Alabama has answered Penn State's call to take the lead on the road. A.J. McCarron, some big throws to Marquise Mays and Kenny Bell, and then to his big tight end, Michael Williams. Bama leads 7 3. Cash now. Todd Blackledge and Hallie Rowe and our ABC on ESPN crew, Brad Nessler, with you from Beaver Stadium, where the tide leads 7 3. And they take over at their own 44 yard line. Eddie Lacy's in the lineup for the first time today. At tailback, and he flanks A.J. McCarron in the gun. McCarron with the quick outs, got it to Smelly, the tight end. Nice gain into Penn State territory. Second down and a couple. And it's Lacey. Cutting it outside, puts his head down. He's going to be about a yard shy. Gerald Hodges, nice job by the outside linebacker. Knock him out of bounds. Trent Richardson on the sideline. We expected to see Lacey a little bit taller, maybe a little more wiggle to him. He had a good game last week in the opener. Actually more yardage than Richardson had. He's a really big third down and one for the Penn State defense. They spread him out now and put Brandon Lewis in as a big fullback in front of Lacey. He'll lead the way. Lacey's got a first down. Picked up five. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, coming into this game, Alabama was in a similar situation to Penn State, rotating two quarterbacks with A.J. McCarron and Phillip Sims. But Nick Saban made the decision this week that he wanted continuity in this game for his offense in a very hostile environment. He was quick to point out that there's still competition at the quarterback position. They said normally their starter would get 75% of the reps in practice, but they are split right down the middle. But today is a rare situation. They want McCarron just so everybody's on the same page. Ledge, he's handled it beautifully so far, I think. Yeah, yeah he really has. Here comes a blitz. Screen pass should be the right play for Lacey. A nice job, though, by Jordan Hill, who's one of our impact players, to get in there from defensive tackle and make the stop. You know, when I watched the film of their game the first week, I thought A.J. McCarron played uh, better than Phillip Sims. I mean, he looked like he was a step ahead in his decision making, played with a little bit more poise. He had 10 possessions with five touchdowns. He did throw two interceptions, but I, I understand what Nick Saban has saw in him and why he's going with one guy in this kind of an environment. McCarron's hit his last seven passes. This time he hands it off. 
A good tough run again this time by Trent Richardson who just checked back in there on a second down at four and he's got the first down. Yeah, and a couple runs on behind that right side now Anthony Steen the right guard and big DJ Fluker the right tackle one of the biggest guys in college football at six foot six 340 pounds. You don't want to give Trent Richardson ahead of steam because he looks like he's a little more warmed up. You saw him clapping after that last run to pick up the first down. Tom Bradley, defensive coordinator for Penn State, says, you know, he'll get four, four, then 12, then 20, then a touchdown. So you got to watch out about getting number three warmed up. First and 10 just outside the Nittany Lion, 30. On the stretch play, it's Richardson. And there he goes on one of those runs that I just talked about. All the way down inside the 10. 22 on that one. Well, this time they went to the other way. They went to the left. Behind the left tackle, Barrett Jones, and number 17, Brad Smelly, the tight end. Look at the tight end's block. Holds right on his man. Motti is blocked by the tackle, Barrett Jones. And you mentioned it. Once he gets into the second level of your defense, he is a difficult guy to tackle at 225 pounds. Alabama, first and goal. At the Penn State eight yard line. With a 7 3 lead. Richardson fights his way to the six, got two. Kyrie Fort made the stop defensively, number 11, the inside linebacker. Right now, just outside the five yard line, if you're Thinking about play action, this would be the spot maybe. McCarron comes back into the huddle. The only thing I wonder about that is they've got this Penn State defense on their heels a little bit with the running game. And you mentioned Trent Richardson is getting warmed up a little bit. They're in the gun, but Richardson's right to McCarron's right hand. It's just a straight drop and a throw to the end zone, and it's over the head of the intended receiver. And Kyrie Fort might have gotten a hand on that. I'm not sure. He went airborne to make the throw high anyway for McCarron. The only reason I didn't like that call is because you had some momentum running the football and it was second down. And now it's third down and you almost have to throw in this situation. And Penn State will be a little bit more in tune to it. And the element of surprise on play action is gone. Or you would assume it is. Now the student body getting into it down there. Nick Saban wants a timeout. Yep. Alabama will take a timeout on a vital timeout third Alabama. and goal. The first timeout of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. 10.54 remaining in the quarter. And this is a vital time right now for Alabama. They don't want to, they don't want to miss an opportunity here. On the road with a chance to maybe go up 14 to 3. And though Penn State, Todd, early and on their opening drive was very impressive. Yeah. They got stuck with the field goal. Alabama takes it down and McCarron's played really well. And now if they get another one here, they're yeah. going to have it rolling their way. Well, McCarron settled down and played well. And more importantly, that Alabama defense that returned 10 starters that we think could be as good as any defense in the country, they settled down. They got a couple stops. They got good field position for the offense. And again, by doing so, they've quieted this 108,000 people as you well. You talk about eight guys on their defense. Todd McShay, our own Todd McShay of ESPN, claims that Alabama's got eight guys on their defense that are in the top 150 prospects to go in the National Football League. <laughs> uh, so they basically got an NFL defense out there. Right now, Penn State trying to come up with a defensive stop of their own. On a third down and goal. Big, big play for the Nittany Lion defense. McCarron in the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's going to have to tuck it, and he won't get anywhere except to the four-yard line. Nice job in coverage and with the rush by Penn State. Devin Still and Michael Maude bring him down, and Alabama will be held to a field goal try. Big stop for the Penn State defense. They needed to, to hold them to a field goal attempt. And Jeremy Shelley will come in to try it. McCarron to hold. Shelley's two for two on the year. There's his numbers from last season. 22-yard field goal attempt. 
to try to make it a touchdown difference. Kick on the way, and he just tucked it inside the right upright. Field goal is good. Alabama and Nick Saban add to their lead. 10-08 remaining first quarter, and now 10-3 Alabama. Became Penn State's head coach. Think it over. There's one of them. There's Joe, all 402 wins. If you're wondering where the glasses are, Joe is nearsighted, so he can see the field fine without the legendary glasses that so many people don around here as sunglasses. At the 29, Bolden back in and has it batted down at the line of scrimmage on a first and 10. Now, again, after that first drive where Penn State gained 54 yards, the last three drives have only netted up 10 yards, and you can just feel that Alabama defense settling in. And again, Throwing on first down, you have to do that some, but you better complete it because second and 10 puts you in a difficult situation. That was Jesse Williams, the junior college transfer, that knocked that one down. And now Bolden will give himself a little more room to see what's coming in the shotgun on second down. And it's a draw coming back the other way, and it's a loss of a yard as Reds dropped by Mosley. Now they find themselves in a third and double digit situation. Getting the ball back and forcing Alabama on a three and out and a short punt. Yeah. And they're not doing anything with it yet. And then again, it gets back when, when, when you have incomplete or a negative play on first down, it just puts you off schedule so much against this defense. Derek Moy, their biggest receiver, has only had one pass aimed his way so far. Bolden down the middle, complete. And he got it to Justin Brown for the first down. It was a big time throw by Rob Bolden because he had pressure coming from Courtney Upshaw right up into his face. And again, this is 274 pounds coming at you. And he hung in there as long as he could and made a big time throw on third and long. And regardless now what goes on on this drive, they just used some clock. They moved it out to the yep. 41. Even if they have to punt, they're That's in a right. lot better situation than they would have been. Osui again in there at fullback. They use him as a receiver at times. Reds behind him on a first down. And Bolden's going to throw. Lost it down the sideline. Incomplete. Intended for Derek Moore. See, this is what Alabama does to you. And, and this is Nick Saban's influence. They show you a defense and they get you to change the play. And then as soon as you change the play, they switch also. So they showed blitz. Rob Bolton checked to a quick throw, thinking he'd have man-to-man -man coverage against a blitz, and then Alabama jumped out of it, and he had nowhere to go with the football. And again, now it's second and ten. And luckily, he threw it wide enough down that sideline that Alabama didn't come up with the interception. We've got three receivers here on second down and ten at the 41-yard line. Bolton's going to roll and throw on the run. Almost caught by Davon Smith, but Dre Kirkpatrick is on. Uh, he's done a nice job on that corner. Dre Kirkpatrick. Preseason All-America choice by some people. Holly? Well, this is something you don't want to see if you're an Alabama fan. Courtney Upshaw, number 41, just taking himself out of the game right now. On the previous plays, guys, he was hit in the back. I saw them treating his upper left hip area kind of on the back of him. They were putting what looked like some of that icy hot rub or stuff on it, but he's an obvious pain guy. He's just jogged off the field. That's a huge loss for the Alabama defense. His replacement, a redshirt freshman. We'll see how he does. All right. Upshaw, one of the captains of the defense that Todd talked about a few moments ago. Bolden in the pocket, fires across the middle, got his tight end, and the ball comes out. Alabama's got it. Unless the play was blown dead. We got one official with his foot out of first down. We got Alabama with the ball in their hands, Daquan Menzi. And now the referee comes over, and Mike McQuarrie says, somebody make a call. Well, the ground can't cause a fumble. And so the question is, was he down before the ball came out, or did the ball come out as he was going to the ground? The headlinesman is saying that he was down. Oh, boy. I don't know. Looked like it was out. Kirkpatrick made the hit right on the ball. Yeah, from that angle, it looks like a fumble. And yep. again, Zerba did not have any contact all week, remember, because of the head Moving injury. on the field as the ball carrier's knee was on the ground before the ball came out. Before the runner is down, he 
results in the first half. And Penn State wants to try to get this ball snapped as quick as possible. Uh, Mike McQuarrie is saying get up there. The yeah. play is going to be reviewed. Dick Honig is our replay official. And my guess is this one's turning around. Todd, although the, the call on the field was a completion. And down by contact with the ground. So now Matt Austin comes over to put the headset on with an official review going on. And this is a critical play because as you just mentioned even if Penn State doesn't score on this drive they flip the field even if they have to punt the football but if this is a turnover as it looks like then Alabama is going to not only get the ball but they're going to be right back in good field position again so a critical play and a critical call coming up. I'm going to say I don't even think it's close. His knees are not even near the ground. No. I, mean, it, yeah, I don't think that could be anything but an interception. I think we're going to have a reversal. And Matt Austin's going to have the call for us here with 441 remaining in the half. Now, I think whichever team gets this call, the play to go with would be a play action to take a shot deep. I think if Alabama gets it, you try to stick a stake in them right now with a big play. If Penn State gets the call, At they the go review, deep. The ruling on the field is the ball was fumbled before the runner was down, and there was a clear recovery by Alabama. It'll be Alabama's and that's why we have reviews. Yeah, that's the right call. So a big play by the Alabama defense and what would have been a first down in Alabama territory, but instead they hit there. Zerba the ball out before his shoulder or any part of his body even touched, and then the recovery by the swarming Alabama defense, and they've got it right on the midfield strike. Now Marquise Mays, who has been their go-to guy, is at the top of the screen. This is him right up here. First down following the turnover. McCarron in the shotgun. He's looking Mays' way, but he's going to have to come up short to Trent Richardson, his safety valve. And Richardson got about six before he lost his helmet on the hit by Michael Mowdy. See, this is what McCarron did not do last week in the first game. This was a call to throw the ball down the field. But watch McCarron as he comes back. He's going to see the pressure means I can't wait for the play down the field. Still gets in there, so he dumps it off to his outlet receiver, Richardson. He didn't do it last week. He did it today. He got a good gain out of it. Seven yards, second and three as we approach the four-minute mark. Jim McCarron stays in the gun. Pressure coming off the corner from Penn State's defense. Zips it down the middle. What a nice play by Michael Mowdy, the linebacker. Mowdy, who's dead, rich, was a wide receiver here and then played in the NFL. And he's got that football gene that so many Penn State players, as Joe Paterno's coached so many father and son combinations. And boy, on the end of that, Talk about laying a lick by Nick Suke. Watch this. After the play and after the deflection, he let the intended receiver have it. Here's the biggest third down of the game so far. And the Penn State crowd knows it. That's Mays that was in motion. Now he sets up on a wing to the right on third down and three. McCarron, the quick throw is complete. Got it out. And a first down to Kevin Norwood. That's his first catch of the day. McCarron looks very poised today. You know, on the road, first big test, a much different opponent than he faced last week in Kent State, and he looks very decisive with the football. You know, everybody's saying, well, what do you mean it's his first start? Who do you take over? Greg McElroy was 24 and 3 as a starter in Alabama, and he's on injured reserve right now, the New York Jets. And so there was a lot of leadership. This guy might have a considerably bigger arm than Greg, but nobody's got more brains than McElroy had running the show. First down at the 37. Here's the stretch to Richardson. Second and five here. Alabama with a touchdown lead trying to add to it before halftime. And it's Richardson weaving his way near the first down marker, but a yard shy with two and a half to go in the half. So a big third down. It's like the crowd just took a big deep yeah. breath thinking, okay, we got to really go here on third and one. <laughs> Especially the student section in the end zone. Now the pom-poms come out. As soon as Alabama breaks the huddle, the noise will begin again. A 
picked up their last third down on a quick throw by McCarron. This time he's under center with Trent Richardson behind him. And he's going to roll the throw to Richardson. Got it to him, and he got the first down and then some. Diving forward near the 22 yard line. Well, third and one. Everybody's expecting a handoff to Richardson. I think Nick Saban and Jim McElwain are thinking we'll go for it on fourth down if we don't make it. So let's go play action. Maybe we can get a big play, but a smart decision again. Get the first down and then get a new set of downs with the catch by Richardson. Richardson, a good receiver. About 23 passes last year, four of them for touchdowns. Seventh play of the drive. Third down passing. A.J. McCarron's been spot on. Here he is on first down to Richardson again. He's brought down by Jordan Hill. Can't stress to you enough how important that little throw is. You look downfield, and the rule of thumb for a quarterback is you look deep to short. So the routes downfield, you look, if it's not there, dump it down to an outlet receiver, and you get eight yards. Second down at short. McCarron looks to his right and fires to the end zone and all. Almost intercepted. It was intended for Smelly. And Mike Hall, the outside linebacker, got a hand on it. Boy, how big is this, Sledge? We're under a minute. Here's the throw again, but go back to the fumble. Yeah. Penn State would have been and Alabama's in. They may not have gotten points, but they would have pinned him with a punt. But now they're trying to prevent more scoring here. Third down and three. Alabama. Time out third and short, they threw to Richardson. That's smelly in motion. McCarron to the middle and inside the five. It's first and goal to Kevin Norwood. And again, McCarron threw a strike and a 12 yard pickup. Well, let's credit this offensive line for Alabama, too, because McCarron has got a lot of time to sit in the pocket and read down the field. He moves slightly to get a better window. And then again, right on the mark with that third down pass. And it's first and goal. McCarron has hit five different receivers on third down. This 47 yard drive has got him set up maybe for another touchdown here. Trent Richardson on the carry. And he's in. Touchdown. Tie. Well, you can't do it much better than that for Alabama. You, you get the turnover, you move the ball down the field, you score. And you use clock. You use clock, and you get the football first to start the second half. So momentum is all on Alabama's side right now. Grant Richardson's fourth rushing touchdown of this Previous young season. Is under further review. We're going to take a look at the last play. Richardson's. Touchdown run as it was called on the field. 35 seconds remaining in the half. Alabama an extra point away from a two touchdown lead here late in the second quarter. Well, one thing Trent Richardson does know how to do is find the end zone. Last week he didn't have good numbers. 37 yards on 13 carries but three touchdowns. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Very methodical that time. Yep. Good running by Richardson. They were three for three on third downs, but get this. Two of the third downs were third and three, and one of them was third and one. And so, on the third and one, they threw it to Richardson. Yeah. yeah. Mixing it up nicely. Jim McElwain on the offense. Spotting the number three team in the country a two touchdown lead before halftime is not what Penn State was hoping for after they had the opening three on their opening drive. So 17 unanswered points if the Shelley extra point goes through. And it does. 35 seconds remaining in the half. It's quiet in the crowd, that's for sure. Tide rolling right now. 17 3 on Penn State. Time since Joe Paterno became the Penn State head coach. We gave you time to think it over. There was eight. Mayor Bryant, Ray Perkins, Bill Curry, Gene Stallings, Mike DeBose, Dennis Francione, Mike Shula, and now Nick Saban. The reason we asked that because Mike Price made a pit stop in Tuscaloosa there just for a little while. 
or it would have been nine. There have been 855 coaching changes in college football. 885, I beg your pardon, since Joe Paterno took over as head man. That's a lot of changes. <laughs> and the score just changed again on that touchdown run by Trent Richardson. 17 to 3 now. And remember, unless they get a great punt return, a kick return rather, by Penn State, I don't think the Nittany Lions are going to get too cute because they used all their timeouts way earlier in this half. Davon Smith from the 10 yard line. He gets peppered at about the 21. Nice coverage. Yeah, that fake punt. Ever since that play, A.J. McCarron just really woke up at quarterback. And let Bolden throw at least a middle screen, but he overshot everybody. He tried to sneak one out there with Silas Red, and he really never found a spot to catch the ball. Well, the problem for Penn State after that first drive is they started to not have any success on first down. They, they averaged right around two yards per play on first down for this entire first half. And again, against this defense, it's very difficult. Their quarterbacks throwing the football one for six on first down. And, and that leads to second and 10, and that leads to trouble against this defense. And that leads to a counter play to Red. They tried this one earlier, didn't get much. This time they got about seven, but the clock will wind down, and that might be it for the first half. So Penn State. Their opening drive took them basically the length of the field. They had to settle for a field goal. They were in Alabama territory before service fumble again. And that turned in to an Alabama touchdown late in the second quarter. And that's where we're going to be at halftime. Number three, Alabama here on the road. Their fans mostly in the upper left end zone cheering their team as they lead by two touchdowns. And we check in with Holly. Well, Coach David, let me take you back to just your second possession of the game. What factors did you consider before you put that fake punt on? Well, we missed a hole on the punt. The guy ran an inside a double team, or would have had a, 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 a good play. And uh, I just felt like we weren't doing much offensively. We need to change the momentum of the game. And even though we didn't run the play right, we lucked out and got a first down and led to a scoring drive. Coach, after that first drive, Penn State was moving it down the field. They had a lot of time on the clock. What changed about your defense that really locked down? Well, you know, we get a lot of stuff that's different than what we've seen and what we practiced. And I think, you know, you just got to get through the script with your players and settle them down and kind of go through the adjustments and the things that they need to do. And, you know, once we did that, I think we played a little better. And just quickly, Coach, what do you like about A.G. McCarron's composure so far? He's done a good job in the game. He's taken what they give him, and that's what he has to continue to do. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. He's handled that first half very well. A.J. McCarron with a tough job on the road. He's done it very well. Alabama leads at halftime, 17 to 3. Their Nittany Lions and then the Alabama defense took over. And you can see the average gain on first down. Penn State has been shut down since that opening drive netted them the first three points of the ball game. 17 unanswered points by Alabama since, and they basically have doubled in total yardage what Penn State's been able to do. Brad Nessler and Todd Blackledge back. Holly Rose somewhere down in there. Sunshine. You know, I know everybody says game of inches, a couple plays here and there. Well, the fake yeah, punt, punt by yeah. that much. Right. They got a first down, and then Serba fumbling by that much. Yeah. Alabama got it back and took it in, and that's been the story of the ball game. I know you talked to Joe Paterno at halftime. Yeah, he was a little disappointed that his receivers didn't play as aggressive as he wants them to. He thought they were a little intimidated by this Alabama defense, and he just thinks they need to play better. I think he wants to see a little bit more of Matt McGloin in the second half. Uh, but, you know, he's one of those guys where he said, hey, you know, those turnovers, you talk about them all the time. Yep. That turnover right at the end of the half was a critical one for us. He had three big ones last year in Tuscaloosa. And a couple of situations here where they've given Alabama the edge and the lead and the football to start the third quarter as D. Milner and Trent Richardson go back deep. Aren't they Hightower and company? They've been sensational since that opening march by the Nittany Lions. So we'll see if Penn State at home can come back against the number three team in the land. Ferris kick. Down to a one yard line. And it's Milner across the 20. Trying to bounce it outside. He'll be level at about the 22. 
has his numbers 110 yards no mistakes. Here comes a blitz on first down and McCarron's flushed out of the pocket will throw on the run and completed it to Williams and they got five out of that as we check in with Holly. Well guys well the first half was winding down over here on the Penn State sideline things were pretty subdued it was like the air was starting to go out a little bit but when they just came out onto the field and were in that tunnel they started chanting jumping around and they had a lot of juice coming out there's still a lot of energy left in these Nittany Lions but some of the guys on the sidelines here were talking they said they'd like to see one of their quarterbacks get in a rhythm like A.J. McCarron of Alabama has they don't care who it is just somebody who can get in a rhythm. Here's McCarron on a handoff Richardson hit. Only a yard game. Nice job. Drew Astorino, the captain and the secondary leader back there, made the stop, but it brings up third down. So they could force a three and out here to open things up in the third quarter. They'd be in good shape. Well, not only would they be in good shape, they would also get this crowd back in the game. Right. And, and they need to do that. They need to give this crowd something to get excited about. There's where the student section's got to come into play as you look at them. From one end zone to the other. They're right behind A.J. McCarron. He's got a third and four. Marquise Mays in motion. And McCarron from the shotgun has it batted in the air. And much like earlier by Jack Crawford, it's Eric Lattimore this time. So they do force the punt. Well, sometimes when you have a running back blocking against a defensive end, it's a mismatch, and Trent Richardson tried to cut him out his legs and went right between his legs. And Lattimore did a nice job of maintaining his balance and getting a hand on the football. Cody Mandel to punt, and Davon Smith and Justin Brown wait on the other end. So the defense did its job. Let's see if the special teams can come up with a play. Kick is high and short. Fair catch taken at the 38 yard line by Justin Brown. Pay attention to see how you could get a thousand dollars. by the fact that Rob Bolden got whacked that last time he threw a pass by CJ Mosley. At any rate, at the 46 yard line, this is about as good a field position as you're going to get if you're a Nittany Lion. And here is McGloin off play action, firing and almost intercepted again. This one would have been Daquan Menzies. Not sure who he was throwing that one to. He had Beecham out in the flat, his back. He had the wide receiver running down the sideline. He kind of threw it right in between two of them. So I'm not sure who he was going for here. Looks like maybe Joe Suey. He was the closest guy to it. And almost yeah. to Menzi. McGloin is 0 for 4. Now he's almost intercepted 0 for 5. See, and now the natives are getting restless a little bit. The, the longest play that Penn State has had from scrimmage today has been 15 yards, which suggests that Alabama does not think that these receivers can run by him and make a big play stretch in the field. So they are really clamped down on all the short routes. Now that slant route is good if the corner is off and you've got some space. It's not good when they're right up in the guy's grill, and that's that's how they're covering the receivers here in the ball game today. And Joe can barely stand to look at a third and ten. McGloin in the shotgun. Going to throw long, and Moy almost had it incomplete. Will Lowry was back there. Not a badly thrown ball, but no. two defenders back there. Well, it was a well-thrown ball, and Moy beat the corner, but the safety, Lowry, is the guy who made the play. He came over to help the corner, Milner, who was beat, and knocked the ball loose. And that's what you want your free safety to do as a helper. And the Nittany Lions wasted tremendous field position. Of course, if they pin Alabama down inside the 10 on this punt from Farah, that'll be okay, I guess. But Marquise Mays waits. On the other end, near the 15 yard line. He's going to back Mays up, that's for sure. He's going to take it at the five. Tough call, but maybe he'll make it pay. Marquise Mays on the return down the sideline. 
And he's all the way out near midfield. Well, he got an incredible block from a true freshman, Vinny Sinceri, whose dad, Sal, is an assistant coach for Alabama and was a great middle linebacker for Pittsburgh back in the 80s. I mean, he left his feet and flew into his block. Watch number three on the right. Watch this guy right here. Size him up. Ooh. Leaves his feet, and that was the key block on the edge for Marquise Mays. A 49-yard punt, but a 45-yard return. I was like you. When he fielded it on the five, you're like, that's a mistake. Yep. You know? But uh, he got a couple big-time blocks. And so now it's Alabama with great field position to start this drive with just under 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter and a two-touchdown lead. Trent Richardson off the right side, carrying Devin still with him for about six or seven yards. <laughs> Alabama coaches telling us last night, watch number three on special teams. He had a couple of vicious hits on kick coverage last week in the opening win over Kent State. And his block just set up Mays on a great punt return. Well, you see that hometown Tuscaloosa. He finished up high school there. He was in Charlotte, North Carolina, because his dad was coaching with the Panthers before he went to Alabama. Second down and three. Brandon Gibson in motion. And they'll just work Trent Richardson now. And he's got a first down, and he's taking would-be tacklers with him again. Jim McCarron's got Alabama back. Penn State's into the field. And he goes deep on the sideline and complete. Marquise Mays was the guy out there. Chaz Powell was coming. Yeah. And for the first time in the whole game, McCarron got knocked down. I mean, Glenn Carson came on a blitz, hit him and knocked him down, forced the ball to be thrown out of bounds. Watch Carson, number 40, right up the middle. And this is the first time in the ball game that McCarron ended up on the ground. And one of the few incompletions that he's had as well. Right, exactly. The second down at 10, ball at the Penn State 37. Karen steps back in the gun, directs traffic. He's got Trent Richardson right on his right hip. Wants to throw, flushed out of the pocket. Now he's going to run with it and gets what he can and gets down. Do Astor Reno. Took a kind of a wicked hit from friendly fire at the end of that play, but he hops up. I guess he's okay. Got leg whipped by his own guy. You're seeing a little bit more aggressive style right now by Tom Bradley and the Penn State defense trying to create some pressure on A.J. McCarron. They weren't able to get him to the ground that time, but they were able to flush him from the pocket. Big third down at seven. Richardson comes out as the extra receiver in an empty backfield for McCarron. Four-man rush. He throws over the middle. And it's Norwood. Does he have the first down? I think so. If he doesn't, it's fourth down at about three inches. There's Tom Bradley, the defensive coordinator. Well, they run off with the two inside guys, and then Norwood on the short crossing route, and he's working on a linebacker. So that's a good read by the quarterback, McCarron, as he sees a wide receiver trying to get separation from a linebacker. That's a good place to go with the ball. Not working, not only working on a linebacker, but throwing it right over the umpire's yeah. ear. That's an extra guy. <laughs> yeah, they stretch out the chains, and he's got it. Uh, half the length of the football. Third catch for Norwood, all on third down. Well, Nick Saban and Jim McElwain both told us that uh, they, they were disappointed with their young wide receivers last week. Thought they played with too much anxiety and they didn't play fast. I think they're playing better today. Obviously, Marquise Mays is a proven guy. Some of the other guys stepping up and playing better today. Norwood, one of those guys. Yeah. Holly mentioned the two guys that eventually will be joining that wide receiving group. McCarron, and they blow this play dead. Brad Smelly might have come out of his stance to tight end. Prior to the snap, false start, 17 offense, five That's yard tall. penalty. First down. After Mike and Jaws, John and Susie had the first game three. Stanley makes the stop after a short game. So to bring up second down and about 13. 
we were talking about these wide receivers for Alabama. You got to keep in mind, too, Julio Jones, who was a first round pick of the Atlanta Falcons, had 78 catches last year. Right. The next guy on that list was Marquise Mays with 38. So that's 40 more catches than the second place guy last year. So a lot of new faces, not only a new quarterback, but new wideouts, too. In the shotgun, second down at 14. McCarron with a pocket to work and a deep ball to Williams. Nice throw and catch inside the 10. 24 yard pass play. Williams caught a touchdown pass earlier in the game. Well, they had a tight end working against the linebacker, Gerald Hodges, number six. And Hodges was in okay position, but he jumped too early. He jumped too soon, and by doing that, he lost contact with the receiver, and Williams went up and high pointed the ball, caught it at the top of his jump, and a nice completion for McCarron. And a first and goal for the Tide with a two touchdown lead. They can start to put this thing a little bit away. Uh, we're going to have a whole fourth quarter and five minutes or so to play, but they're in great shape. Just outside the Penn State seven. Here's a stretch play to Trent Richardson to the corner. Did he get there? Linesman's right there, and he says no about the one-yard line. But he got six more. Trent Richardson slowly putting together a pretty impressive day again. Look how he secures the football. You know, Mark Ingram rarely ever fumbled when he was the primary ball carrier. Yep. Trent Richardson, you see him carry that ball high and tight. Second down, a goal at the one. Trent Richardson's got four touchdowns here early in the season, and he might have five. It's close. Just short of the goal line. He says he's in. They say no. Gerald Hodges, who was beaten on the pass play, did a nice job of getting in there, getting underneath the legs of Richardson, and stopping him short of the goal line. McCarron throws, and incomplete. Chris Underwood, the tight end, got his left hand on it. Boy, that's a big difference. Now fourth down and about two feet. Fourth and goal. Well, they tried to go with this quick count. They, they lined up and tried to run the play quickly, hoping they'd catch the Penn State defense out of position. And Underwood was open, just not able to come down with the catch. That's a big difference, my friend. A yep. touchdown and now holding. I'm not so sure I wouldn't have thrown that one to number three. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it looked like he was open in the flat. 18-yard field goal attempt by Jeremy Shelley. And he right through the middle. So Penn State wins that battle a little bit as they hold the tie to just three more with 450 remaining here in the third quarter. 20 to three, Alabama out front. Alabama in command, Kirkpatrick. Another big play defensively, giving Alabama the ball back at its own 35-yard line. And it'll be Eddie Lacy shedding the first tackle and the second and almost the third and almost a 10-yard gain. Todd, we talked about it. Coming in, three turnovers last year in Tuscaloosa by Penn State, three this season, two in Alabama territory, and the third one was right on the 50-yard yeah. line. Yeah, and then any momentum that they had, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's tough sledding against this defense, period. Getting in the end zone, moving the ball, only 170 yards of offense, but they did at least have the ball in Alabama territory a couple times, and not much to show for it. This is just going to be a dose of Lacey and Lacey and more Lacey, I would expect. Second down of a yard, run blitz, Lacey straight up the middle, has got the first down. And he's got about three after that. Well, you know, the, the situation here, I think it's interesting. Coming into the game, so much talk about four quarterbacks. Both teams playing two quarterbacks. Neither team really committing to one or the other. I think Alabama's quarterback situation, even though as Holly reported, it's still going to be very competitive between A.J. McCarron and Phillip Sims. But I think that situation has gotten a little clearer, yep. that A.J. McCarron is, is capable of leading this team right now. On the other side, I think Penn State's quarterback situation has gotten even muddier. I don't know that it's gotten any better or any clearer by today's performance. 
And Bolden had a scoring drive, though it was a field goal the first time he had it. The second time he did an okay job, and then they went to the groin in the third series and the fourth series. And I don't think number one ever got his rhythm back after yeah. that. Penn State, when they play top ranked teams, we mentioned you got to go back to 99 the last time they beat somebody in the in the top 10. But top 10 teams since 2000 lost the last eight against top five teams in three and 11. And they're going to be dropping to one and one on the season. They had high hopes coming into this one. And the first seven and a half minutes of the first quarter, they had reason to think that way, and so did their fans. And Lacey now with a big opening up the middle again, broke a tackle. Lacey inside the 20, rumbles his way down inside the 15. He's a load. And the Penn State defense being a little bit tired too. And he goes for 29 yards. Well, one of the things everybody talks about with Eddie Lacey is his spin move. I mean, it's something that he really relies on. Watch after the contact, the spin right there. But he keeps moving forward. He's strong, but he's amazingly quick with his feet for a guy that big at six foot, 220 pounds. Call him the circle button because of that spin move. <laughs> he might have gotten spun around because somebody hit him in the helmet, but either way, great run at 78 yards on nine carries. And now Alabama inside the Penn State, 15 at the 13 yard line, first down. Keeping it on the ground. Brett Richardson, and he's in. Touchdown, Alabama. Great to have two backs that good, interchangeable. And Trent Richardson, his second touchdown on the ground today and his fifth of the year. Well, Alabama did what you expect them to do, but I have to say that was the first drive today where it looked like the Penn State defense had their will broke. Uh, they just didn't look like they did. After that last possession ended in a turnover, the Penn State defense was not ready to, uh, to play that drive. The extra point is up and good. And the lead goes to 27 to 3. So it's even more impressive score than it was a year ago in Tuscaloosa. First, it was a big portion of Eddie Lacy, including this 29 yard run. That got him down to the 13 yard line, and then give Lacy a breather, give it to the All American candidate, Trent Richardson. 13 yards and a touchdown. Saban told us yesterday, turnover margin and explosive plays the difference in most games. Yeah, so. it really is. And that comes from his NFL background. Those are the two statistical categories that, that mean the most and explain most games. And as you look at today's game, clearly Alabama has the upper hand. The turnovers, the explosive plays. And uh, they, they've been solid. You know, yeah. Solid play from the quarterback. Their defense settled down after the first possession and made it very difficult for Penn State. They haven't beaten themselves. They were solid in the special teams. Everything you want to do when you go on the road in a big game to have a chance to win, Alabama's done. They straightened out all the things that were problems a week ago. They put it on the ground, fumbling. Though they only lost one, they did have four interceptions. And today, you saw that turnover difference as they kept it clean. At the 12-yard line is Adrian Amos. And out near the 30. And McGloin still a rather bold and now back in at quarterback. And he goes down the middle and got it complete to Allen Robinson. The freshman, that's his first catch. So you have to wonder now as Penn State gets ready for their next ball game if it's going to be Rob Bolden, is it going to be Matt McGloin, is it going to be both of them again? Those questions will be asked a million times here in Happy Valley by the fans. They were a little restless, mostly with Matt McGloin today, I think. Just judging by the sound around the stadium. Bolden. Here at 27 to 3 in the final 544. You know, you talk about the two quarterbacks at Penn State and where they go from here. I was involved in a two quarterback situation here my sophomore year. Myself and Jeff Hosteller, we were in the same recruiting class. Jeff had a couple older brothers that played at Penn State and uh, very similar to the start of this season. Coach Paterno didn't make up his mind until the Friday before the first game. He talked to both of us individually, said he was going to start Jeff Hosteller, but we would both play. And it kind of went that way for three games. And then in the fourth game, uh, he named me the starter for a game at Missouri. And 
and I started every game since then. Or, Jeff or from that. And Jeff went to West Virginia and had a great career. And uh, I, I think that it's obviously it's better off to have one guy that you go with. I just don't know that either one of these guys has made it clear. Yeah. Come on, Rob. He's the better of the two runners, doing what he does better than McGloin. They got a first down. The other thing. A lot of people wonder if there's any tension between McGloin and Bolden, and the coaches will tell you there's not. But when you're in a situation like that, you always try to one up the other guy in practice. And during the offseason, McGloin was back in his hometown in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Somebody asked him, there was a rumor that Rob Bolden might consider transfer. And he said, well, that would be a big loss because he's a great backup to me. Yeah. Well, that's the kind of guy McGloin is, and that's right. not the kind of thing that makes for great teammates. But when you're competing, you're competing. Well, and make no mistake about it, you can say that they get along great and certainly that's the most important thing that those two guys handle it but let, let's not kid each other guys in the locker room have their favorites they, 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 the locker room is divided who they maybe think should be the guy and they may not vocalize it or say it but that that happens second down at six here is Bolden firing complete inside the 30 they're down close to their deepest penetration into Alabama territory. Well, the, the Boldens and the McGloins sit together, so yeah. families get along, yeah. I guess. So it's all that. <laughs> and that's wonderful. It really is yeah. because, again, how those two guys handle the situation is the most critical thing in this whole operation. Penn State hurrying up, but time is running out. This throw intended for Moore is broken up. I'd say Hightower got back there. I think you got to almost run some slant goes because they, they've tried to throw slants all game Hasn't and worked. have not hit one no. because uh, Alabama their, their corners are clued into it. Menzi and Kirkpatrick and Milner. So I think you got to do something off of that. You fake the slant and then take it up the field. Moy is the big receiver. He'll go out to the top of your screen. On second down at 10 at the 28th. Bolden steps up in the pocket. He's going to take off with it again. Oh, man, and a head-on shot, and off came the helmet. C.J. Mosley. Oh. And he pops right back up. Dad says, that's cool. That didn't feel that good, I'm sure, though. And he had a concussion problem one time last year. Here's real time and real sound. Got to give him credit for popping up as yeah. quickly as he did. And the give and another collision, but it's going to be a first down run for Silas Red. Right now, Alabama, I mean, they, they obviously don't want to give up any more points, and so they're not going to play prevent or anything like that. But they're more than happy to let Penn State keep running the football and eating up all the clock and uh, not leaving themselves any time when he, if they would get the ball back. You saw Kirby Smart. A highly respected defensive coordinator right there near Nick Saban and right now he'd like to pitch the touchdown shutout. They gave up the field goal on the opening drive of the ball game and nothing since. And we're under three and a half minutes. He's one of the best in the business at what he does. Bolden. This one on is picked off by Barron. No. Can't, can't throw the slant against these guys today. Dirk Patrick was just hanging there and then the All-American safety who's already got an interception got his hands on it. This defense is going to cause a lot of teams to have fits this year, not just Penn State. This is just adding to the total yardage a little bit for Penn State, but it really doesn't matter right now. The only thing I'll say about this defense, I don't know how strong they are up front, just with their normal front three or four in terms of rushing the pass or with just three or four. This one in out of the hands of Brandon Beecham. As we take a look at our All-State Good Hands play of the day, I just mentioned the All-American safety and captain of the defense from Mobile, Alabama, Mark Barron, and watch him go up for his 11th career interception right there. That took away another threat by Penn State today inside their own 10-yard line. And for all practical purposes, that was about the ball Holding, game. Offense 67, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Left tackle, Quinn Barham. Aaron didn't play in the uh, bowl game we did last year because of that torn pectoral muscle, but he is back to full strength and he is some kind of player. 6'2, 218 pounder. He will bring the wood to you and uh, he can cover just as well as he can hit. 
Well, and again, his experience, his knowledge of the defense, his ability to be a quarterback back there, get guys lined up. Bolden steps up, going to run with it again or try to, but he only gets to the line of scrimmage. Ed Stimson was there waiting for him. Well, you think about Alabama, where they go from here. A game against North Texas after this at home, and then they get into their SEC schedule. Arkansas, their first SEC game in Tuscaloosa. Their schedule sets up pretty well in terms of their toughest games at home at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Third down and 20 now. Penn State running out of times. Time and going to the corner. Sean Kersey with a great catch of the one yard line. So they're down in scoring territory, 26 yard toss. Well, you know, a couple times Rob Bolton has underthrown the deep ball and it got intercepted once. This is a perfect throw over the outside shoulder. You only need one foot inbound. The right foot was inbounds when he made the catch. Shawnee Kersey with one of the better catches of the day. So now it's at the one yard line and Penn State can make it look a little better on the scoreboard if they can score a touchdown and we obviously would have an onside kick coming up. Bolden looking to the sideline. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, Somebody's got to call timeout. <laughs> timeout Penn State. This is the first time out of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Mike McQuarrie is trying to give the signals and uh, shaking his head because they had to use a timeout. So down to two. But the ball is just inside the two. That's the good news for Penn State. They were number two in the country last week, number three now because LSU moved ahead of them. But they're going to have a 2 0 start. As Todd said, North Texas, ESPN 3, Arkansas. Florida on through the lists in Gainesville that'll be a, an interesting game Florida seems to be playing pretty well so far under new coach Will Muschamp new offensive system with Charlie Weiss well guys these players down here on the bench for Alabama are thinking ahead just like you guys are I heard some of the offensive linemen and Barrett Joes go Guys, we got to keep growing every week. This was a good start, but we've got 12 more, and we got to get better every week. Now, I'm no math genius, <laughs> but I think that means they're counting on 14 games, which, could, which means they're counting on a national championship. Yeah, they're, they're counting on Atlanta, and then they're counting on another one after that. Barrett Jones and that offensive line did a great job today. 13th play of the drive here for Penn State at the one-yard line. Bolden lost it to the corner and overshot Allen Robinson. We know the if you go back to 2010 and the way that regular season ended for Alabama with the gut wrenching loss at home to Auburn after they had the big lead. Uh, we got a little bit of a glimpse of what the chip on their shoulder was going to look like when we saw them in the Capital One Bowl a month later because they dismantled the Big Ten champion Michigan State team. And uh, so I think they carried that all the way through the summer all the way through their conditioning programs. I heard they had videos of the second half of that Auburn game right. running through their weight room all during their their lifting sessions in the winter. Airborne is red. Second effort. Almost lost the ball, but he's in. Touchdown. He might look at this one too, but for right now it's Silas Red for a touchdown. It's always a little dangerous when you reach that ball out over the goal line. Silas Red, all the ball has to do is break the plane. It's good there, isn't it? Yep. A 71 yard drive, 14 plays. Took him a lot of plays in four minutes and 21 seconds. Rob Bolden stays in there as they will go for two, thinking that uh, if they get it, it's a 16 point game and two touchdowns and two two right. point conversions. That's a lot of ifs, but. You got to play the percentages, I guess, or the card that everybody looks at. So let's see if they can pick up the two point conversion and then the onside kick that'll be upcoming. Bolden might run for this one. Dives and got it. 
A nice quick decision by Rob Bolton. I think the one thing I've seen out of him today that is a, is a dramatic improvement from when he played in Tuscaloosa last year, his decision making has been quicker today. Much more decisive, throwing the ball, when to run, took a shot at the end of this play, but this is a good decision. That clock goes off in your head, it's not open, I gotta do something else, and he gets a valuable two points for his team. He's taking some big shots today too, and that one, I think it was his right calf or something as he was diving, he grabs his leg. But he did get the two, and that will have an outside kick up upcoming. 27 to 11. With a minute 53 remaining in the ballgame. Yeah, a lot of the crowd sticking around. A huge crowd today of 107,846. So we got an outside kick coming. Evan Lewis will do the honors. The good hands team for Alabama. All up there, 10 to 15 yards away from the football. And this one's got a chance, but it's covered by Alabama, and they'll take over with a minute 52. Brad Smelly. Funny that on two kicking plays today, the tight end has made a nice play right there. Yeah. It's Smelly with a recovery and the onside kick, but I think the whole game changed on the fake punt, yeah. and they got it literally by maybe two inches. Yeah, and you, as Nick Saban explained to Holly, they didn't execute the play right. They thought it should have been a bigger play. They ended up making it just by that much of the football, but that seemed to, to give confidence to A.J. McCarron, and then he played with poise. He, he saw the field. He hit different receivers, and eventually that offensive line, you know, that they, they played a lot of different guys last week on the offensive line, moved some guys around. They kept that starting group the same. They had continuity with their offensive line. They had continuity with the quarterback, and eventually they wore down this Penn State defense. Holly was talking about the players saying we got to we got to get better every week. They've gotten better from a week ago, and they give you the impression that maybe the sky is the limit for this team, at least with the defense they have. And as this guy grows into his jersey, number 10, AJ McCarron, he's going to see more and more. Second time out of the half. Different defenses, but today he's handled a, a huge crowd and a pretty good Penn yeah. State defense very well. Yeah, he has. Uh, you know, when you talk about Penn State, I mean, they still got a lot of football left, obviously. I mean, they, they wanted to fare well in this test today. Uh, early they played better, but they still have uh, a lot ahead of them. Two more non-conference games at Temple. Steve Adazio, former offensive coordinator at Florida, the new head coach at Temple, then Eastern Michigan before they get into Big Ten play. And, uh, you know, the, the end of their schedule is where it really heats up for them. Yeah, their last final three, three games. Yeah. And I, I, you know, when you get back to the quarterback situation. Uh, Joe Pa has left the building, not left the building, <laughs> but he's gone down to the locker room. Matt Richardson. He's got over 100 yards today. Tacks on a few more. And we're down to 140 to go. Timeout Penn State. The third and final timeout of the half. Alabama leading the field here. Just about ready to leave the field with a big road victory in this 15th matchup. Alabama will go to 10 and 5 in the series. It started way back in that Liberty Bowl we talked about in 1959. Rip Engle was the head coach and Joe Paterno was his assistant. I didn't even put that together until Joe told us yesterday. He said, you know, Liberty Bowl used to be in Philadelphia. <laughs> well, Liberty, <laughs> Liberty, you know, the Liberty Bell. I didn't know that before they moved it to Tennessee. So you learn something every day, especially when you're around Joe Paterno. He is a national treasure, in my opinion. He's up for another prestigious medal that the president would have to award him. The uh, government of Pennsylvania has nominated him for the second year. And uh, if anybody deserves it with all he and Sue have done for this school and the library and the football team and college football in general. Uh, yeah, I'd say he'd be a pretty good recipient. At the 35 yard line first down. Alabama here in the final minutes with Philip Sims cleaning up that quarterback. Eddie Lacy, who's had a big day, puts his head down and gets in the middle. You know, talking about Joe Paterno and Nick Saban, and I mentioned earlier that Joe said if Bear Bryant was still alive and tomorrow would have been 
Bear Bryant's 98th birthday on the uh, anniversary, 10th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, those two had great respect for each other when when Nick was at Michigan State he beat Joe twice at Penn State and then when you consider that Michigan State's only beat Penn State four times in the history of the program Nick did a pretty good job against Joe there too but we said you know uh, your thoughts about Joe Paterno and uh, he said you know there's mental toughness there's physical toughness and there's moral toughness and if any guy in college football's ever had the moral part of it it's Joe Paterno with what he's done at Penn State I thought that was nicely said by Nick. I like how he explained it too. I mean, moral toughness being doing the right thing no matter what the circumstances are. Right. And, uh, and that's what Joe Paterno has been about, doing the right thing. And you know what? I think Nick Saban is doing the right thing at Alabama as well. Well, they get a big win on the road, that's for sure. They thought it would be tough, and for at least part of the game it was. But then the Alabama defense stiffened, made things very tough on the two quarterbacks of Penn State, including Rob Holden. And Matt McGloin, and it's 27 to 11 as we go down to Holly. Now, Coach, I know you say it wasn't executed perfectly, but that big punt really set a tone and gave your guys some juice. How did that really turn that first half around for you guys? Well, you know, I think the punt return in the second half was the thing that changed the field position and the momentum of the game and got us ahead in the game. It's a little bit disappointing the way we played two minutes at the end of the game defensively. There's always a lot of things you need to work on at this time of the year, but this is a great win for our team. It's a great win for the state of Alabama and all of our fans and people. This is a tough place to come and play, and I'm proud of our, our, our guys and the way they competed today. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Only Nick Saban would be worried about the last drive against his defense that made it 27-11. That's our final score, Alabama number three over Penn State. For time